Well, this is going to be part one in a series of videos about our uh, off-grid electrical system upgrades on our 2003 Winnebago Adventure Class A motorhome. In this uh, compartment here is where it's all going to go. I'm going to have uh, 800 amp hours of uh, lithium batteries and, of course, a uh, you know a big inverter and you know all the other solar charge controllers and other equipment that we're going to need to complete this whole setup. In, in this video, I'm going to just uh, focus more on the battery setup. I went back and forth about which uh, batteries to go for to get the 800 amp hours, and I ended up going with um, with the GC3s from Battleborn uh, because they just seem to give me the most uh, amount of options for laying out uh, those batteries in this space. And I can get 800 amp hours with just three of them. So they're 270 amp hour uh, batteries. So I can combine three of them together and get the 810 amp hour total uh, reserve capacity. Because of the unique form factor of those batteries, I'm able to also do some kind of interesting things with the connections, I'm going with just pure bus bar setup between the batteries. I'm gonna take you through you know, the balancing of the batteries and how I connected them all together and hopefully it'll give you uh, some ideas if you decide to uh, take a similar approach on your RV. But let's head on inside and do this because uh, it's just too cold out here. It's like in the upper 30s right now and I'm not sure what the weather's gonna do. Let's go in and uh, I'll show you what's up. So I've actually had these, uh, these GC3 batteries for several weeks now. They actually arrived when it was warmer <laughs> outside. I wanted to make sure that I had them on hand when I needed them because of all these uh, supply chain issues that we're having. You know, I, I ordered a, a Multi Plus 2 also uh, back in April or so and, and it took over three months to get it. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't have that issue with the, uh, with the batteries. But I, I got them from their uh, website, Battleborn's website, and they were discounted at the time. And they also uh, shipped it on a pallet. So there's three of these batteries, and I guess they're just heavy enough. They have to lay them on their side, and, and they had to come on a pallet. But it didn't cost me any shipping, so, so that was no big deal. Eventually, I got around to, uh, to doing a top balance on them. Now, this isn't something that you normally have to do if you're... Uh, if you're connecting them in parallel, you know, according to Battleborn, and I am connecting them in parallel, so three of them in parallel to get that 810 amp hours of capacity. But I have a, a bench power supply here that works good for that, and I can just set it to 14.6 uh, volts and a low uh, amperage of about two to five amps, and, and just slowly top each battery off one by one. And that's what I did. And you know, once it hits that 14.6 uh, cutoff, then the, the amperage starts to really drop down. That's how you know it's, it's full. I went through that process for each of the three batteries individually and just let them sit for a couple days and then started working on a way to, uh, to connect them all together in parallel. Now, because of the really nice uh, battery posts that they, they're not even posts, the battery terminals that they have on these uh, batteries, I was able to go for more of a, a bus bar setup on these and not have to use any battery cables or make any uh, battery cables to connect the batteries. I ordered some, uh, some copper stock uh, from eBay and when I got them, you know, I, I cut them down and started making these custom sized uh, bus bars to connect them. After they were all connected in parallel uh, with these bus bars, then I just let them sit and they just balance each other out and eventually settle down to you know, lower voltage until you put a load on it. So they're gonna be stacked uh, on their side, which makes it a little bit taller. The good thing is that these, uh, these batteries have these, these little feet on them and they also fit together very nicely and they have some holes in here that you could, I guess, bolt them down or whatever. 
but I also found that uh, quarter 20 bolt actually can be threaded in this uh, thick, must be like really heavy duty ABS plastic. And I was able to kind of tap some, some threads inside these uh, just very slowly so it doesn't get too hot. And I was able to kind of thread these out and, and then make these uh, some custom brackets that fit over the holes. And that seemed to make this whole setup really secure. Now it turns out that these little mounting feet on the batteries fit very nicely in some strut channels. So I had some leftover strut channel from when I did the solar panels and I just, just snugged them right in there and that's how I'm gonna mount them inside the compartment. All right, so here's uh, where the batteries are gonna go, right in here, and the inverter's gonna go here, and everything's gonna be anchored down. And we've got this little ledge here, which is a great support spot to anchor the batteries down. But I measured everything, and I drew up a nice little diagram here that I can use to build a little mock-up of this compartment. It'll just make it a lot easier to kind of stage things and, and get things hooked up before I actually do the full install. Now as cool as this setup is, at least I think so, uh, it's all gonna be hidden anyway. So I, I made a, a front uh, piece of wood that, that's gonna be covered with this carpet material 
Um, and it's going to hide all of this stuff uh, from view if you were to look inside at that compartment. That's okay. Uh, you'll know it's back there. Oops. <laughs> so it looks like uh, with this bus bar here, the, the cover for this bus bar isn't gonna fit so the screw holes don't line up here on this side. And I don't really wanna make this bus bar again. So I'm just gonna trim <laughs> this, this cover, make it a little bit shorter so that everything lines up. And it'll be just fine, but oh well, slight oversight on my part. Now I only had to make two uh, battery cables. And didn't have to use any cables at all to connect uh, the batteries to each other and to the shunt and the bus bar. Now these two cables uh, are four out cables and they're gonna be used to to, to power the, the inverter. It's gonna stand up here. I don't really enjoy making battery cables. Could you imagine how many cables I'd have to make if I had eight individual batteries to get to the 800 amp hours? Huh. I only had to make these two cables, which worked out really, really nice. Now the only downside I see with, uh, with kind of this bus bar type of approach, especially in an RV or something that's moving a lot, is this potential for something to kind of come loose. I don't think it will because these are on here pretty solid and I plan to anchor these down really, really well. So I don't expect a lot of movement, but you know, I guess that would be an advantage of uh, using battery cables is that there's a little bit of flex in the cable. So if there is some movement, you know, it shouldn't affect the, uh, the connection to the battery terminal itself. But I don't anticipate any problems, but I guess that's a potential for an issue that I'll have to keep my eye on and just keep checking the tension on the bolts and make sure everything's okay. So let me know what you think of this setup. I think it's a, it's pretty cool and it's just a, the battery part of the system. If you want to see a full diagram of the entire system that I designed uh, to go into this compartment and to upgrade the RV, I put together a nice little diagram that I think you'll like and it also has a a list of parts and all the components that I'm using that you know you could use as a reference uh, so you don't have to scour the internet for all these sources and some of them are actually uh, discounted so uh, be sure to check that out if you want to save a few bucks as well. Now the next part of the project is going to be getting the inverter and all the other uh, Victron gear that I'm going to install in here uh, connected and set up and programmed and just talking together and just kind of resolving any of those issues here before I take it all out to the RV. Now, as always, you know, we'll keep talking about this down in the comments section. So be sure to head down there, share your thoughts. Let me know if you have any questions or anything and uh, we'll see you there.